Okay, about um, a year ago when I started these lessons and I started posting the, the first lessons, I was asked a question about how I process roll film and I had explained it, but the person who watched the lesson wanted some clarification. I thought, well, it's hard to explain. I, I tried to explain it the best I could, but I thought the best way to clarify things was to demonstrate how I process roll film. And I had said that processing roll film uh, in reels, when you put it into these uh, canisters and you, you turn the chemistry upside down, you pro the agitation wasn't even enough. And I especially had problems when processing uh, even areas like the sky. And so um, I decided to make a video where I demonstrate how I process roll film, both 35 millimeter and 120, mostly 120 now. And um, I thought I would start by showing you what I meant by uneven development. So this is a, a contact sheet that I made in 1967. So I was 15 when I shot this. And you can see here the unevenness by the sprocket holes. Um, if you, um, let's see if I can zoom in. This particular shot here, um, where the sprocket holes are, you can see the chemistry is getting unevenly distributed on the edge of the film. So I took this negative yesterday and I printed it. And so I made this print yesterday and it looks like this. Push it back up again. And when you print it at this density, you'll notice that you, you can always burn this in and burn this in because you can kind of see that. But when um, the point is, when you're trying to make a fine print, you need it to be process as evenly as possible. So when I make a darker print, you can see how pronounced the edge of the film is. And so uh, it took me a while to realize I was having this problem because I was only 15 when I made this particular exposure. And eventually I started using water bath and I uh, didn't do as much agitation. And then I shot um, this, the, this contact proof here is um, actually, this, this was shot in 78. So just over 10 years later, um, I would get better nakes, but I was still having some issues and I chose this one just because it was, it had the sky and you can't really see, again, at this density, you can't really see um, any issues. Uh, I should put it here, put the leg in here. So this picture, which was shot, let's see, 78. Yeah, so, 19, so that was, uh, by 11 years later, I'm getting better nags, but it's still some overdevelopment on the edge. You can kind of see, and you can't see that because it's printed so light, but when you print it dark enough, then you the, even though it is better, it's still uneven. And so, uh, just about that time, I would say, probably 1980, um, I met a friend named Newbar who started Oscar's Photo Lab, which is still uh, going strong right now in San Francisco. Oscar's, um, Newbar worked in a, a lab called Oscar's in Lebanon when he was a young man, I guess. And he showed me how he was taught to process 120 film, which was in a tray. And when he showed me that, I went and I shot a whole roll of sky and uh, processed it the way that he showed me and it worked. Um, 
Now here's here's a this is probably about the same time I would guess. This is not processed the way the Nubar told me to process, but this is 120 as opposed to 35 millimeter. I'm just gonna put this up. And you can see clearly, well, there's a reflection there. Let's try again. You can see that um, the bot the top of this is getting overdeveloped. And, and this is 120. This is a 645 um, my, my Maya camera I had. Um, probably it was just purchased not too long ago before I made this exposure. And so when I printed this one, I, I probably had to crop it, which is okay, but still, I mean, you, you want even development. When I uh, printed, I, that's an old print. When I printed it again yesterday, um, it looks, you don't notice it. But when you, again, when you print it dark enough, then it's there. And you see that. And processing 120 film um, in a reel, because you, you, you put it into these reels, and the, when you turn it, and you have to go up and down, my father taught me to sh um, agitate up and down to get any air bubbles off of the film. When you turn these reels, the outside gets more agitation than the inside. Because when you turn this much, you get this much travel on the outside of the film. And the inside only get this much travel. So that's another problem, is the exposures <clears throat> that you uh, wind up placing into these reels on the outside get more agitation than the ones on the inside. So going to tray processing of roll films eliminates that. Of course, now you're only processing one roll at a time. Uh, back in when I was young, I used to process like six, eight rolls at once and try to keep all the chemicals in, in line. And so it just it just makes things a lot more difficult when you when you try to move fast in the dark room. And that's another thing. So then after I learned from Nubar how to process, I shot. I went out and I started shooting um, skies and all these skies, all these rolls were processed in a manner that he showed me. I wasn't afraid to shoot skies anymore. Um, so I chose uh, just one of these. I think I chose this exposure here to uh, enlarge. You can see you know, one third of the frame is sky. And uh, this was, let's see, there's no date on this, there's no date. This is probably 80, I would say about 84, 1984, 83. And um, so now, I finally am happy with uh, the way I can photograph anything neutral, evenly lit sky. And even if I print it down, it's even. And believe it or not, that's not easy to do. Um, it turns out that in Of all the processors that I have used, it's always the roller transport that gave us the most even development. The problem with roller transport is bromide drag, which is when you have uh, unexposed film adjacent to areas like the gray. Um, usually when you drop type into a, a negative and you get this little drag of the black shadow moving in the direction that the film was moving during a roller transport but basically when you process in a in a tray you're doing like a roller transport um, movement the way we got a, got rid of the bromide drag was when we every we had black text we would uh, give a little bit of exposure to that black okay so now I'm gonna go in here and I set up these trays Yeah, just like that. 
So um, this is like a five by seven tree and has an eight, eight by 10 tree. And I always use a, uh, a water bath. So the water bath allows the film emulsion to soften. It gets less curly. Um, when I do go into the developer, um, the developer attacks the emulsion uh, more gently. So I always use a water bath and a water bath also warms up the film to uh, the temperature the developer's going to. Obviously this is not developer, I'm doing this in the light. It's just water, but it shows you how um, I, I do this, this particular uh, technique. So I've got a roll of exposed film here and I'm just going to open now. The temperature of the water is, is a little bit higher than the temperature of the developer. So this being 120 film, I have to strip it off of the paper. I tear it along. And so this gives me a reference as the starting point. This having the, the little bit of tape on it dif uh, differentiates this end of the film from this. So if I put this in, actually you don't want to handle the film that rough, but you can see how curly it is. So normally when you, when you take, it, take it apart, you hold it like this. This goes into the water. And I allow it to soak and it naturally curls into itself and like I said if I'm using 70 degrees in the developer the water will probably be about 74 um, you can see the uh, color of the water changing now I just turn it around and go back and this is basically the action. You just pull it out and it release this and it grows back. And the, the, the agitation is continuous then. Okay, so after this has been softened by the water, I turn around and I go into the developer. And again, it just curls into itself. So you start with that end and you when you take the film out of the developer, you go back to that end. You don't need to go fast. You just need to go evenly so that you can be, you can repeat yourself. The timer's going. At this point, the timer will read one minute, or the beginning of one minute, sorry. And um, doing this process will get you the best even development that you can get. The problem is, you're doing only one roll at a time. And you'll have to calibrate your processing. Um, uh, the difference that you'll get doing this kind of process. Because you're going to need less time than if you use a, a reel. Um, mainly because the agitation is continuous. So you can use, but you can use a more dilute form a developer. It's a throwaway developer. That's why I, I, you know, I dilute it one to two and I throw it away. Um, and you can dilute it more if you find out that you're only developing for five minutes and you want to develop longer. Um, another thing to keep in mind is how much, what your utilization is going to be. So if you're processing, um, this is one quart of developer or this tray holds exactly because it, it allows the film to be completely submerged this way um, obviously that's more than one quart so you don't want to use um, a large tray if you don't have to to be honest with you I've never done this with 35 millimeter because um, by the time I learned this technique I stopped shooting 35 millimeter in black and white whenever I shot um, with a 35 millimeter it was almost always color usually transparencies by then and um, so but you can do this with 35 millimeter as well uh, if you like I, I just happen to like one uh, medium format when I go out and shoot in black and white I don't think I've yeah I, and I have 35 millimeter cameras I just don't use it for for anything now anyway after um, a certain amount of time that you've established. So you, you want to do your film testing 
in this manner, in this speed. And like I said in my video, um, I snip off one frame at a time after a given amount of time. And then I know each frame how much development it got. And based on that, in one roll of film, I was able to determine my normal, my normal minus, my normal plus processing because I use a green light behind my shoulder to allow me to see where the frame ends. And I snip it off the scissors and I drop it in the stop bath. And, um, okay, so my normal in this uh, um, method with my current developer diluted one to two was I think 90, nine minutes at uh, 70 degrees. So you can feel that this does not have the tape. So you time it so that if you're gonna remove it, you want to remove it where the tape was, which is where you started. And then you try to go into the stop bath, which this is not stop bath, <laughs> it's just water again. It's interesting how much color comes out of the film when you soak it in water. Um, when you go in here, it's, it's this part. And again, you want, and then another thing I forgot to mention is because your hands are warm, it tends to keep the developer warm. Um, you might even wind up with a temperature higher uh, at the end of the development because of the warmth of your hand. Now, there's my process thermometer, so you can always check your temperature with your process thermometer. I'm going to move this over here. Assuming you've given at least 30 seconds in a stop bath, then you can now go into the fixer. And this is fixer here. I just thought it'd be clear. It'd be interesting to clear the film, see which is going to go black or clear. We'll see. So now it's going into the fixer. And that's the step. Now, after complete fixing, um, I use a 11 by 14 tray <coughs> and fill it with water. And I just um, do this until uh, about five minutes has passed. I probably change the water two times in that period. Then in a, in a, a new tray, of uh, water, I'll add some ammonia, a cap full of ammonia, and soak the film for five minutes, agitating it. And ammonia will help eliminate any um, uh, fixer, any of the uh, fixing elements from the film and allow it to be easily uh, removed by washing. It's just a, it's easier than using hypoclearing agent. You can use hypoclearing agent or permal wash or whatever. But ammonia, I mean, because this is plastic, it, it's not difficult to wash out. But some kind of wash aid, ammonia is, is, is the cheapest way to go based on what I've read. But again, you can use hypoclearing agent and so forth. And then after the ammonia treatment, um, change the water three times. Um, two minutes in between and the film's ready to hang up. Now you can see the film clearing. There was no development because that wasn't developer. So I suspect this to be clear. And you can see how fast it clears. And generally speaking, if it takes uh, a minute and a half to clear, you're going to want to fix it for at least three minutes. You want to at least double it. It's probably safer to go to four and a half minutes. So if it clears in one minute, fix it for three and it's done. Then proceed with your washing. So it's um, clear now. And that only took, well, this is a, a rapid fix. I use a rapid fix without hardener for both my films and plates. Another thing you have to be careful about is having the corners run in, because I've done that. Um, if you move too fast, your corner 
will scratch the emulsion because this is emulsion in and this corner can come in and damage your first exposure there okay so I'm going to stop now because this is not real you know images I just wanted to show you that this will give you very even skies e more even than a dip and dunk um, if a dip and dunk is set up correctly I'm just gonna, I don't know what to do with this but okay so hopefully you can see me here so this is how I process um, roll film one roll at a time um, same as how I print I process one sheet at a time. I don't stack up a whole bunch of prints. If I wash a stack of prints, it's no more than eight prints. They're usually 20 by 24 or so. And even then, it takes me an hour to wash eight prints. Um, but um, you have better, uh, better control that way. You can treat your film um, gently throughout this whole process and maintain a really good uh, control. Use fresh chemistry, discard it. Um, I think what I've come up with is after my first roll, if I process nine minutes, my next roll, if it's the same temperature, I'll process for nine and a half minutes. I give it because it's you're using a some of the uh, energy that the developer has so each successive roll you have to add more time at least 10 percent more time um, and then you'll be able to get uniform um, development so that's how i do it now when when i was first asked the question what do you mean how, how exactly do you process roll film i tried to explain it through type into the comments but Hopefully this answers your question. And I, I'll do this with other things that I come across when I get questions that I can't quite explain. It's better to do a demonstration. Then I'll bring out the camera and, and show you so you can see exactly how I do it. It took, I had been shooting at least 20 years before I learned this technique. And so I was putting up with uneven skies for a long time. And uh, until Nubar showed me how he, and he happened to learn it in Lebanon, <laughs> probably in the 50s or the 40s, I don't know. Anyway, that's it, okay? So uh, if you try this, good luck with that. Um, my video on the zone system, how I test film, is I shoot, I use a meter, and I, I shoot specific areas, and I go for a specific density range on my negatives. And that's how I determine what normal is. Normal for you might be six minutes, given your film and developer. For me, for my particular, for tri uh, Triax and Microfine, the diluted one to two, it wound up being nine minutes at 70 degrees, okay? It's somewhere around there. Okay, good luck with all this, bye.